Hey folks, so BenQ sent me their newest monitor for creators, that's the PD3420Q. It's a 34-inch monitor specifically tailored for content creators. It packs a bunch of features such as USB-C support with power delivery and a built-in KVM to easily switch between two computers. I've had the 32-inch 4K version of this monitor for over a year and I've been testing this new ultra-wide variant for the last month, so here are my thoughts. Let's go! So first, in the box, you'll get a factory calibration report, then a bunch of cables such as HDMI, USB-C, USB 3.0 for the KVM, and a mini display port to full display port cable. You also get this wired puck controller, which allows to control a bunch of settings for the monitor more easily. And then you get the stand, a back cover to hide cables, and finally, the panel itself. Assembly is super simple, you attach the base to the pole with the included thumb screw and then clip it at the back of the monitor and you're good to go. Looking at the physical specs, it is a 34 inch ultra wide flat panel with a 3440 by 1440 resolution, so it's a decent pixel density but noticeably lower than a 32 inch 4K panel in comparison. It's a fairly thick monitor but I still like the design. The stand is identical to my previous 32 inch variant and that's a good thing as this stand is very stable, mostly made from metal, the height adjustment is spring assisted and it looks very good on its own. You definitely don't need to replace it for a third party monitor arm to get an ergonomic setup with it. One thing that's different than my 32 inch is the bezels, they're much thicker and not the same all around. This ultra wide version has a thicker lip at the bottom and I believe the 32 inch version looks much better for that reason. Apart from that, they share a lot of similar design elements. So now taking a look at the port selection, it has one mini USB port for the puck controller, two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DisplayPort port, one Type-C port, one USB 3.0 uplink port, and then two USB 3.0 ports for the KVM switch, as well as another one on the side plus a Type-C port. So when you connect over USB-C or with the USB uplink port, you have three full-size USB-A and one Type-C ports available. Overall, it's a pretty good port selection, and here the USB-C port allows both video and data transfer, as well as charging at up to 60 watts for a one cable solution for laptops. Now, to the image quality, this is a pretty solid panel. It's IPS, so you'll get accurate colors and great viewing angles, and is Visa Display HDR 400 certified, so that would be a decent monitor for working or consuming HDR content. It also comes with a bunch of presets to match standard color profiles, such as sRGB and Rec. 709, where the coverage is 100% and 98% for the DCI-P3 profile. I believe the 4K version only had 95% coverage of DCI-P3 and is not Display HDR 400 certified, so this one is slightly superior. If you need a color accurate monitor, then this might be it. I don't have any tools to validate those claims, but I can say that it looks very good out of the box, especially with my Mac where 10-bit colors are well supported. This monitor also allows for picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture, -picture, so you can have two inputs showing up at once, but the implementation is fairly poor as the monitor doesn't report the smaller resolution back to the connected devices, so they still try to output an ultra-wide picture, leading to a stretched image. You can also have two different color profiles side by side, which can be pretty cool to simulate what something might look on a regular monitor in comparison to your flatter work color profile. As for the KVM feature, it works in the same way as with the PD3220U, so one computer connects over USB-C and the other one with the USB uplink cable plus a dedicated video cable, either DisplayPort or HDMI. And then you can switch your USB peripherals between two computers at the same time as the video feed. So with the click of a button, you can control two different computers and switch the video feed at the same time. This is an awesome feature if you use two computers at the same desk, and it works without hiccups. The only downside compared to the Thunderbolt 3 enabled 32 inch version of this monitor is the bandwidth. Here with USB-C, you have to choose between 10-bit colors with USB 2.0 speeds or 8-bit colors and full USB 3.1 speeds. That's a pretty big downside to me as the image looks much better with the 10-bit mode on my Mac, but I need those faster USB 3.1 speeds when I connect external SSDs or SD cards to import footage for my videos. If you only connect a keyboard and a mouse, then it doesn't really matter. But for high-speed devices, 
then that's definitely something to consider. One unique feature with this monitor is that it comes with a puck controller that connects at the back. There is a dial that's clickable and then three numbered buttons, a back button for menu navigation, and then a rotation key that goes over multiple options for the same setting. You can customize what the dial and the numbered buttons do within the OSD and then clicking on the dial actually opens the OSD menu and you have full control with this puck to navigate and change settings on the monitor. The numbered buttons are assigned to a kind of setting like a picture profile and then you can set which picture profile to switch to for each button and the dial can also be customized to either change volume, brightness or contrast. The rotation button will let you go through a specific setting such as input, color mode and the KVM switch. Overall, it's pretty useful as you can switch between common settings without looking at the OSD directly, but I personally don't use it as the monitor also has two customizable buttons at the back and these are good enough for my needs. So in conclusion, this is a pretty cool monitor. But I still prefer my 4K variant, mainly because of the additional bandwidth that Thunderbolt 3 provides, but also because of the thinner bezels, it just looks better. I believe the biggest things to look out for are the lack of Thunderbolt support and the overall format and resolution, as otherwise it's pretty much on par with other monitors from the PD series by BenQ. If you're looking for an ultra-wide monitor with great image quality, a one-cable USB-C solution, and KVM support, then this is definitely a good option to consider. So that's it for today. Hope you learned what you wanted to know regarding this monitor. As always, I'll have a link to this monitor down below for you to check out. If you're considering getting it, please use that link as it helps the channel. So thanks for watching, make sure you leave a like if you did, and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, as I'll see you in the next video.